Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss comparison of squirrel gauge induction motor and slip ring induction motor. We already discussed detailed analysis on the construction of squirrel gauge induction motor and the detailed construction of the slip ring induction motor. Now, we should compare both these things. Then we will understand what is the differences between the squirrel gauge as well as the slip ring. Here, in case of squirrel gauge, here construction is simple and rugged. If we observe the squirrel gauge, it is very simple because it has only the copper bars. So it has only the copper bars. Very very simple construction and rugged. It is looking very very rugged construction. Very top construction. Next second, here construction is complicated. Why? Here wound, wound of windings. Here winding should be wounded. So whenever winding should be wounded that time we should wound, wound the winding we should give the we should maintain that winding and we should give the phase difference between the winding and to maintain all these things to do all these things construction is complicated in case of the slip ring induction motor required there is no maintenance as there is no wear and tear Actually, there is no requirement of the maintenance because it is a simple and rugged construction. It looks like a simple and rugged construction because there is no winding set. That's why there is no wear and tear. That means very simple thing. Here, required maintenance as slip rings or brushes are present. Here, we, we have the slip rings and the brushes. Slip rings is for to connect the winding the rotor winding with the external resistance and we have the brushes also brushes is to collect the current and supply the current for the armature so wherever the two are available we should always look after these two things otherwise we have some errors in the working of the motor that's why it required maintenance the reason is slip rings as well as the brushes so it is less cost why it is less cost there is no winding just directly we have the copper bars here it is the more cost simply because it is the winding and the arrangement of the slots so basically it is the more cost it is less white the reason again is the there is no windings right here it has the more weight because more windings are available more windings are available here no load power factor are better compared with the slip ring without external resistance here we have the generally in case of the squirrel gauge induction motor we have we don't have we have the power factor in the no load case it is cos phi not it is very good very good power factor in the no load case it is only very good power factor here for full load when this is compared with the slip rings if you use the slip ring power factor for in case of squirrel gauge for in case of squirrel gauge in case of slip ring induction motor but without having the slip rings we don't put the slip rings that means we don't have the external resistance next here in case of slip ring induction motor the full load power factor is very good the full load power factor is very impressive almost it is 0.8 lagging power factor okay this is the comparison between the squirrel gauge and slip ring induction motor by this comparison we can give the conclusion is like this in this scim that is squirrel gauge induction motor have their better running performance but poor starting performance okay it is squirrel gauge induction motor is better running running performance is good but starting performance is poor in case of slip ring induction motor here have better starting performance but poor running performance okay this is better starting better starting so by comparing the these two two types of induction motors we can give the this conclusion okay 
next so up to now we discussed about the complete construction of the squirrel gauge induction motor not squirrel gauge is, is a induction motor it's a combination of squirrel gauge and a slip ring both construction now we have to discuss about the working of the induction motor so before entering into the working first we need to discuss again so what are the laws involved in the working of the three phase induction motor then the understanding the working is very easy so again the first law is the Paraday's law Paraday is the scientist name it is a law here look at the law whenever there exists a relative speed between a conductor and magnetic flux an emf is induced in the conductor so already we discussed about this but once again we have to recollect this that is so we should have a conductor we should have a conductor just observe here this part is the conductor yes and the magnetic flux and we should have a, another is the flux just look at here this is the north pole and south pole flux lines always travel from the north pole to south south poles okay and we should have some relative speed between this so it should be varied we should have some relative speed so for example if look at the motion is upside and this is down that means the conductor will be rotates like this the conductor will be rotates like this when it rotates then automatically in between the flux and the conductor we have a relative speed is there we have a relative speed is there then the emf induced in the conductor just look at here if you connect here two wires for this conductor we will a voltmeter then we have to get the this induced emf we will get the this induced emf it has a positive and negative so this is the thing so in the conductor itself it will induce it will induce a emf so this is about the paraday's law so this paraday's law is useful to understanding the induction motor here the frequency of induced emf this induced emf has some frequency this induced emf has the frequency that frequency always depends on the relative speed so it will depends on the relative speed how what is the relative speed so what is the uh, difference in speed between the this flux and the conductor this flux and the conductor this relative speed will decides how much it has the frequency this is one of the important formula to understand the induction motor the next next is the Lorentz force equation this is the Lorentz force equation that is whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field so here the reverse we are giving current carrying conductor current already it has a current carrying conductor that should be placed in a magnetic field we have some field then automatically what happen the conductor will experience a force so it rotates so it rotates this is the reverse process this is the reverse process and then the conductor will get some rotation conductor get rotation why it rotates the reason for the rotation is conductor will experience a force that force is called Lorentz force equation this is known as the Lorentz force equation so here just look at here it is a reverse process for example initially conductor have some current conductor have some current and we are giving a flux then automatically conductor will rotates so generally this is used for the generation of the generation and this is generally used for the motor action for Lorentz force equation generally useful in the motor action but these two things Lorentz force equation and Faraday's law both will be useful the working of the three phase induction motor okay so it is a reverse process next Lenz law next is the Lenz law here if any current induced in the any part of the circuit it always try to see that magnitude is reduced try to see that the magnitude is reduced this is a very important we can name the another thing the effect current induced is the effect opposes the cause opposes the cause cause is the what is the cause what is the effect 
effect means for example the rota effect means for example the rota speed effect opposes the cause cause means wow how it rot cause means it will try to decrease the relative speed we can name it the another thing okay simple thing just you mind it the effect opposes the cause is known as the lenz law is known as the lenz law so these are the three laws are useful to uh, understand the working of the three phase induction motor very easily okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you